What's up, guys? Uh, this is one of the best GSC games from the season of SPL, I think, uh, which is why I'm going back and doing it after the fact. Because, uh, you know, time zones and other life shit going on means I uh, can't always get them live. Um, so, yes, uh, I will be taking it very slowly. And let us begin. The participants are Earthworm, uh, one of the best players of all time. Um, for a while he was considered the best of all time, still in that discussion. And Century Express, who is known for playing a lot of tiers, but especially known for playing a lot of GSC. Both are extraordinarily uh, precise at this tier. And I will stop bullshitting now and begin. So, um... God, my roommate's fucking cat is just... First of all, I have allergies to cats, and now it won't stop trying to get in my fucking room. Anyway, um... We've got an Executor lead against Jinx. Executor is usually trying to paralyze an electric lead early and make stuff happen that way, or, you know, explode on it, sleep it. Sleep is not as liable because of Sleep Talks Aptos, but you know, force it into a position where it's just really struggling, and then you can take advantage of it somehow. But he's got to run from Vapor or for Jinx and go into Vaporeon. Vaporeon is pretty forgotten on these offensive teams, which uh, tend to like uh, running Machamp a lot. But then they get utterly shredded by Jinx, and uh, Vaporeon does not take any of its nonsense. So uh, CE goes right back to Exeggutor. Since he knows at the very least an ice beam won't be coming, and Earthworm is not the kind of player to just uh, flail helplessly against a Vaporeon when he doesn't have to, cause, especially because he wants to get his spikes up. So, uh, Executor does not kill Cloyster in one with Giga Drain, but it'll definitely um, take a humongous chunk out of it. So, he would punish him for spiking there, and that would mean that Cloyster can't switch in later to try and check Vaporeon with a boom meaning that he would have to fall back on his electric, which is very likely, on this kind of team. So Earthworm decided to forego that, and instead went to his Snorlax. Um, not trying to catch a Stun Spore on his Jinx or his very likely Zapdos. And uh, CE is actually running Stab Sleep Powder Executor, which is not that common, but still deadly. So uh, the option of Sleep on Executor is pretty forgotten, but it really messes with Skarm. And uh, Snorlax, as you saw, and not Sleep Talking Electrics. And as I said earlier, even a Sleep Talking Electric being forced into a non-rest sleep is not always ideal. So, uh, it's a good weapon to have that is pretty forgotten about these days, so I'm glad to see it work. Uh, anyway, so he tries to take advantage of the sleeping uh, Snorlax to get up a Spikes with Cloyster. But uh, he gets met with a Jinx instead, so he decides to eat the Psychic, get the Spike advantage... And uh, then Earthworm makes a great move and predicts a switch and thieves. CE had not seen any spikes damage yet, and he had no way of knowing it was Thief. Now, that it really changed anything, because he was going to Snorlax there regardless, but still. Um, I think that Double Edge was a little, a little predictable, um, or that it could have been, uh, could have been something else. Uh, mainly a switch to Zapdos. Until he reveals Thunder, of course, and then you're like, oh, okay, I get it. So, uh, really just going all in on that Cloyster coverage to remove it for Vaporeon. So, uh, this is almost certainly going to be Double-Edged Thunder, Earthquake Self-Destruct, although Curse Rest over Earthquake and Self-Destruct is also fine. But on an offensive team like this, especially with Steelix to help against uh, this very thing, this Electric Bird, then... It's uh, totally reasonable that it would be Boom itself, since you're not relying entirely on it. But you really got to get that offense going, uh, so you're not desperation exploding. You want to limit those. You want your uh, explosions to be offensive and nailing a certain target, so you can really get them out of the way. Anyways, Abdos uh, can't just doesn't want to just uh, let Steelix go totally unchecked, but because he needs it for uh, Vaporeon. But you know, uh, Steelix is kind of a threat itself, so uh, he's just going right for the boom. Uh, he's not going to let himself get forced at any corners, that's what I mean. You want that explosion to hit that target. When Steelix is at that high of health, then it's really hard to say, alright, well, he has to boom here, so it's more predictable so I can go to Gengar or something. Nope. You, uh, the most dangerous explosion is the unexpected explosion. Because, you know, when Cloyster's at 2%, and, you know, he pretty much 
has to boom, but you've also got a scar and, and you know, he wants to surf and all that shit. Yeah, it's uh that that was a bad uh, not fleshed out example, but it's the principle. Um yeah, when explosion is coming from a higher health like that, then it's uh, difficult to stop, and it's likely you hit your target, and that's a perfect example of what I was talking about. So, um, now we've got some double-edged Snorlax Wars. Uh, Earthworm is running a double-edged uh, Cursed Snorlax of his own to uh, for just general wallage against threats like Electrics and uh, Tentacruel and other Snorlax, which is pretty important when you've got Jinx Zapdos, because, you know, Cloyster's fine early in the game, but you don't want to be solely countering Snorlax with it. Anyway, uh, CE Snorlax is going to win out, and then he's going to follow up with a Nidoking. He being Earthworm, of course. Anyway, um, see, he's not going to let that uh, Nidoking pick him off for nothing when he's got such a good switch in Zapdos, ready to terrorize Earthworm's team now that Snorlax has gone down. And, uh, it's really hard to use Ice Beam there. As much as you know the Zapdos is coming in. Speaking of Ice Beam, uh, CE's running Light Screen, so this is a really nice uh, version of Vaporeon offense. I mean, it's not revolutionizing or, you know, changing the way uh, GSC is going to be played in the future. But, uh, it's, it's nice, because you got the Sleep Powder Executor, which is underappreciated. You got the or attack mix lax, and you got the light screen Zapdos to really help out with uh, Vaporeon taking electrics because when your thunder isn't scratching, um, isn't scratching the vap, then then you're, I mean, it doesn't, it's not the only way to beat Vaporeon, but it's a pretty common one, so you're gonna want to be careful. Anyway, um, see, he doesn't rest, which I, I wish I found odd. Uh, also, uh, light screen is really nice for helping out against Jinx. I thought that was uh, strange uh, that he didn't rest. Instead, he goes to Executor and, um, you know, I guess that was a good move because uh, Executor is not going to be useful against Jinx and against a high octane team like Earthworms. It's very likely that, um, well, something like Steelix could still be the case, but it could also easily be a Tyranitar there. And there you're thinking, you know what? I may as well get uh, Executor in in a place where I know it's not going to, um, where I know it's going to do something. So, uh, that was really nicely done, really just minimizing the possible variance. And he gets to sleep, uh, off against Nido King thanks to the, um, light screen. So that was pretty nice. And, uh, Earthworm had a Gengar. He's running a version of Case to Victory's team. But uh, he could not exactly switch it into Explosion there, since um, it's you know he's not exactly obligated to go for uh, that Explosion. He can just go for Psychic. I mean, it's not as much use as he would like, but you know, Nita King's still sleeping, so even if Jinx comes in, he's got the Vaporeon. He's looking pretty decent. So uh, he was he goes Cloister just to if he if it can be exploded on th this last Pokemon, it should be immediately. Uh, no sense in uh, letting it set up before you do that. Um, th this applies to a lot of things, but... Uh, anyway, now we see some really nice stuff going on. This is a Thief Gengar, and what we see is Earthworm going to Zapdos, and then going to the Sleeping Vaporeon to have it have its leftovers stolen. So Zapdos will still have its when it tries to stall the Gengar out. And this also gives it extra uh, leftovers for defeating um, for e uh, tanking an Ice Punch. So that was really nice. He can still try to wear it down with uh, Vaporeon, since it's really especially bulky and Surf hits really hard, but that was that was really key. That was a, that was a potential game winner there. So, um, yeah, this, the score was so lopsided uh, a while ago, but uh, as you can see, you know, fighting till the end, Okay, I'm sorry, that's not a cliche. It's like, you know, fight to the end, you'll never know what happens. But I'm saying, you know, things can um, not even just turn around. They can always be uh, brought back. Although, of course, the the uh, biggest factor of being brought back here is the uh, Nidoking Ice Beam crit. 
Um, not sure why. I'm not sure why he didn't rest. He might have just been uh, paranoid of letting in something for free, I guess. Which is, and he preferred to take the initiative with Executor rather than give Earthworm many openings because you don't want to give Earthworm many openings. Um, yeah, that crit was pretty big. I mean, because Zapdos usually does stall out uh, Nita King. Uh, when since he switched after that crit, I'm not sure if he was going to commit to that. Um, for fear of letting in whatever scary thing. Look at that leftovers uh, recovery, by the way. Bailing him out by 1%. And he's smart. He's not going to bank the game on Thunder. So he's going to rest. And, uh, I mean, he's got really good odds this way. So Earth Earthworm needs some shit. Because even if he crits Ice Punch, then he can just sleep talk. He can sleep talk Thunder and hit, or he can sleep talk rest. And so, Or uh, Light Screen. He, he's getting a good sleep talk pretty much every time. So it's only a matter of time. Earthworm needs like Thunder Miss and you know some crits. Those, those those would be ideal. But yeah, um, that crit really helped out uh, in this scenario anyway. But uh, it's it's pretty much been evened out by this point since Zapdos survived, and it eventually is going to get that Thunder off pretty quickly actually, and uh, win the game. So that was a, that was a terrific game. I really enjoyed this one. Uh, I thought this was a great example of two uh, GSC offenses. Uh, slamming into each other, but intelligently, not just, you know, throw out high base power, or in this case, booms, and see what happens. I think this was very methodical and planned out. I think both teams were great. And uh, Earthworm's editive case is team. I'm, I wonder what last he used on Nita King. Uh, maybe like counter or something. Or a uh, fire or fire move to catch Fortress and hair cross off guard. That's not bad either. Uh, for certain more annoying, um, bulkier teams. And, uh, but yeah, I thought that, that was, that had some excellent play on both sides. Uh, the, the thief at the end, especially the, the thief bait with Vaporeon was just amazing. Um, yeah, super close stuff. And, uh, I, I encourage you guys to, uh, study the replay a little more than, and really think about it. Um, more than just whatever my dumbass was telling you to think. Um, because this this was really, I can't stress enough how excellent I think this game was. Uh, you, you will learn a lot from this battle in particular. And uh, so thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, great job to both battlers, and I will catch you next time.